The Great Barrier Reef, largest living structure that can be seen from space. The biodiversity and habitats rival that of the rainforest. From fish to sharks to corals, from islands and keys to beaches and mangroves, this World Heritage Site is an important ecological resource, not only for the people of Australia, but the world. My favorite experience on the reef is just the fact that whenever I was on the reef, I just felt a tremendous amount of joy. Like I've never been so happy in my entire life. That's an experience that I just wish that everyone in the world would get to encounter. The diversity of corals is absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, when it's here in the water and you're breathing through your snorkel, it's so serene. Uh, the water is crystal clear with 20 meter visibility and there are more types of coral than you ever could have imagined. The structure of the reef was absolutely gorgeous. There were these amazing columns and so many different coral species as well as fish and it was just an amazing sight to, to see. And you just want to cry because it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen and this world that you never knew existed underwater is just right there opens up for you. The reef is definitely worth saving. It's not gone um, and it's still there and there's still plenty of it that needs to make sure that it's there for not just our children but our children's children. Um, it's such an important part of the ecology that without it this planet just really wouldn't be a planet I'd want to live on. It is in a warm climate and it's in nutrient poor waters and because it's in nutrient poor waters so many species depend on the reefs for food, shelter, and relationship with other species that help them survive and if the reef disappears well then all these incredible animals that live within the reefs, within the corals will actually disappear too and you can lose through so many species which can completely alter the environment and affect the surrounding environments. Everything is interconnected and if you remove one thing or decide that you don't want to save something else, it's going to end up affecting the rest of the system. So all of the pieces are very important. We should not only focus on saving the reef. The reef is definitely an important issue. It is the coral in the reef is an indicator species, which basically means that if there's something happening to the coral, that is a sign that there is something happening to the environment. So coral bleaching is a sign and changes in water salinity or pH or temperature, all factors that affect the coral because they are sensitive to the environment. We should focus on saving not only reef, but all diverse habitats that we have, everything on this planet. You know, it was all here for a reason, and you know, saving the rainforest, saving the reef, saving all the great biodiversity that this planet has to offer is important because you take away one little thing and you have like, like massive impacts everywhere around the world. So everything on this planet is basically a network of systems and if you cut strands from one system you're going to have strands on other systems start to break and get loose and then suddenly if you cut too many strands you're going to have this entire network of environments just beginning to collapse and if that happens it's going to come back and basically bite us in the butt. What gives me hope is just being able to see the reef itself and know that hope is not lost. This trip has really renewed my hope in sort of in people, um, meeting all of the wonderful in-country partners that we had, um, such as Reef HQ, Reef Ecologic, um, the Adrenaline team on the boat. They've all just really shared their knowledge and their passion for education and conservation. There are other people out there that understand the importance of sustainability and climate change and the threats are imminent and there's something that we need to do about it. And I gather hope from knowing that I'm not the only one and that I have an entire team behind me that is working to make sure that these things are taken care of and taken care of the right way so that we don't lose precious gifts like the Great Barrier Reef. It is an absolutely incredible feeling to find your people to be, be in a place with so many people that are passionate about the same things that you are and really have a strong drive to protect the earth. So 
what can we do to help? Well, we can be aware of our actions because it's our actions really that are going to make the difference. So whether that's reducing your footprint or making people aware of climate change or even something as simple as picking up plastic bags or not even using plastic bags. There's quite a few things that we can do. So I'm from the Midwest and the United States, which is basically in the middle of the country. And being in the middle of the country, you may think, well, there's not much you could do in order to help with the coral reefs and stuff. That is not true. Everyone, anywhere can make a difference. Everything from the middle of the land is eventually going to end up in the water and in the Great Barrier Reef. I live on a coastal area, so I'm very much used to having to realize that it's not just us that affects it, it's everybody. So you have that plastic bag, even if you're in the middle of Arizona, nowhere near any water, Plastic bag can fly away, it ends up in a river, and then boom, it's in the water. Same thing here in the river. I think that one person changing their ways can go a long way. So I think that letting all of my fellow long walked peers know that what they do matters is really important. Everything's connected. We're all connected. The whole world is. We, we can't just keep thinking of ourselves as a small island on our own whether we're landlocked or not. So there's many things that um, we can do to help the reef. We can, you know, cut back on our plastic use. We can cut back on any kind of fuel emission. So driving your car less, it's gonna help with climate change because that is a big factor that's affecting the reef. Um, and then, you know, using less plastic straws, making sure you're recycling, so things aren't ending up in the ocean that shouldn't be there and causing destruction. It always starts with that first step. The first step is always the hardest, but making personal choices, um, just one step at a time, something small that's easy that you can do. Once you get comfortable with that, you can start building on it and moving on to the more complicated, harder, bigger plans that you have. But just doing and showing and modeling for your community. For me, my community are my students, so if I model those examples of conservation behavior for them, then maybe they pick up on it and take it home and do the same thing. Not doing anything is a choice and that apathy is our, our biggest threat to the environment right now. So every little thing that we do matters and everything that we, every choice that we make on a daily basis impacts the world to some extent. So it's never too late to start. Before I came to Australia, I think I heard from a lot of friends and family and even on the media that, oh, 90% of the Great Barrier Reef is dead. And I would even get text messages from back at home, is, how's the reef look, is the reef alive? And even though the reef is under severe pressure because of human impact, um, the reef is still very, very much alive. And I think that's what I was most amazed about is the fact that there's still so many species and so much life and it's just still there, it's still vibrant. And that's what gives me hope is the fact that there's still something worth fighting for. I think that there's a lot of, you know, doom and gloom out there in the media, but there is hope for conservation. There's just people that care so much and passionate enough, there is something you can do. There are groups out there that care and they're working hard to protect their uh, habitat and ecosystem. And if there's anything you want to do, you know, you can just reach out and find those groups and there's always something that everyone can do. And you'll see that you're not alone in the fight. The fight is still going strong and it can be within every one of us. I think that that is something that is absolutely priceless and um, is going to change the world.